So, hello YouTube. I think now we are also live on YouTube. Hello, welcome to our 22nd worldwide meetup. This time, really cozy. We are only some people, but we will have a nice meetup. You can join us on the Zoom link you find in Element. When you want to talk or to present, feel free. Every, everywhere when you're in the world. And if you are in Berlin, come to Node Institute, Neukölln. Uh, also, you find the link and the address. Here are free drinks and let's have a chat um, about everything what you are thinking about. This is a little bit therapy v -v 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 round. Everyone is welcome. And so today there is a very impro theater, but I can um, in our new face, also very cute. Oh, thank she? you. Oh my God, you're so kind to me. <laughs> <laughs> Will you, uh, I like also, you make now the, we always need, I'm happy if here is more color, more women, and more queerness. Everyone is welcome. And I'm very happy that you are here today. <laughs> Great, thank you for the welcome. So just, I guess, to introduce myself, my name is Harshini. I started working with the Node Institute with David and uh, Stefan to help manage the courses and help get our upcoming winter season together. So if you are an instructor for V4, be prepared to get a bunch of emails from me to pester you to submit things. Uh, but most importantly, I'm helping to make sure that there are students enrolling in the classes and promoting all of the amazing work that you all are creating. My background is as a visual artist. Um, I'm a touch designer user, so I'm excited to also learn about V4. Um, and, I, and my background is that I'm Sri Lankan and Peruvian. I come from a film and theater, film and theater background. Uh, currently just finished my master's in new media design in Berlin and if you're ever interested in like 18th century proto-cinematic technology I'm the person to come to to nerd out about that hi um, and yeah I also organize a symposium for new media and electronic art in Berlin uh, which takes place it takes place in February so if you're around please come visit and say hi what's it called it's called manifest io and that's the we website that's Manifest. the symposium and it's organized by TimeLab. So timelab.art will be the website and manifestio.berlin is our Instagram. If you are on Instagram, which I know is not very common with this community. But yeah. This is still a thing. What, is it? it is. It yeah. is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. more so than ever before. And there are, there are some of the community on Instagram where you will jump out of the kitty verse. You will find some people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially with uh, V4 beginners, all of the students come from our Instagram reach. So that was my analytics homework for the week. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Ashin. Um, Juan. Hi. I think you <laughs> saved our day by <laughs> saying saying yes when we ask who has something to present. Oh, we, yeah. have, we have some yeah. more uh, people. Oh, yeah. What what to say to Matthias? Hi. <laughs> Hi. You want to present yeah. something? And I can share the screen. Yeah? No, uh, thank you. No, not today. <laughs> I'm just joining. Great. Good to have you. And H2A, Randall, we know. H2A. Hello, H2. I don't know you. <laughs> nice to have you here. So, um, we you have it's your stage. I don't even know what you wanted to present. So I am uh, uh, let me surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually wanted to present this for a very long time, but it wasn't really finished. I don't think it will ever be finished ever. But it's, um, I mean, last time I was here presenting was in the first Worldwide Meetup, and I presented a, like a sound reactive uh, application made in beta. And basically, today I'm going to show two projects, and one of them is exactly that same project, but in, uh, but in Gamma. <laughs> so the thing that has been keeping my time for the past year. So now, if this works, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, 
Can I share the whole screen? Yes. Basic. Show windows. Hmm. It only lets me windows, huh? The screen, no question. Ah, that's what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, this is the thing that I've been working and I will show you how it actually looks. And it also has an output. So basically, this is a composition slash live performance uh, Ray March based uh, tool thought for sound reactive graphics, basically. And it's the only reason why I actually build this is because the biggest challenge that I find when making sound reactive uh, video is how to keep uh, all the mappings together. So when you have a million mappings from coming from the sound sources and going to different parameters in the video, then I always found myself uh, copying over and over again the same patches and the same things. And I ended up with this uh, monster, basically. <laughs> <laughs> So this thing has some FFT tracks where I can just uh, load FFT sound analysis. I also have CV, so control voltage tracks for my modular synth. And then I have a section which is mapper, which is the, contains the actual mapping, so where what goes where. And then in this case, I have an SDF editor, which allows me to edit the, the scene that I'm working on and some scene uh, editor is called, but it's basically just the output parameters of the whole thing. So just to see quickly what it does, I have prepared this thing, which hopefully you will hear. You will also hear myself. I guess we can live with that. If not to feedback, yeah, I need to mute myself. Maybe I can... can we go Maybe not that. I think now it's okay. I don't know, I still hear myself, but it doesn't matter. So, if I make an FFT track, this comes up, and I have all my FFT settings, which are currently not working. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. Now I have some sound. <laughs> and hear myself with echo. Maybe I... <laughs> the thing is that if I mute myself, then nobody hears anything. So, but I will do it anyway. No, no, but the speaker is coming from me. Ah. This is the camera taking the, the, the sound on the screen. So now it's working? Yeah, normally I can okay. hear you. You can hear me still? You should see it on your output. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then I will clear all and we'll just open what I had prepared for today, which is this thing. There is now no sound on this end. There is only, no sound. Only the speaker. Yeah, we can hear you talk, but not the synth. Not the thing. I think it was going through the, some microphone. Yeah, it's this thing. Then the mic is removed from the mic. I have a rather complicated sound setup to work in order to do this, so sorry. I think, to, I think you need to kill that one, no? No, as an input. No, but this is not connected to the, his computer, it's connected to mine. Yeah, but that's probably what's feedbacking the whole thing, but it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. You mean you should kill the speaker? It's not the speaker, it's just the microphone. Yeah. Now you cannot hear me, no? Or? We can hear you. We can hear you, but not the music. Yeah. No, I think this idea was to, to mute yeah, the loudspeaker. Yeah. But the thing is that everything is coming through the same thing. But your microphone sure. should be coming into your voice meter, your microphone of your laptop. No, it's not. Uh, I don't have any microphone here. You can use this to mute your mic. So, uh, the thing is that we won't keep this talking, we won't be able to hear. Well, well, just yeah. see. Ah, well, it works like this. If you don't hear the sound, it's fine. So, yeah. This is... So, basically, 
I have all these mappings, which is why I, the reason why I build all this application. So all the data coming from the sound analysis, I can basically map to any of the shape parameters. So if I quickly delete these guys, now nothing's happening. I can simply check, for example, I want to change this C amount. I just right click, I set a new map, and bang, I have a new, a new map happening. And I can choose the source, I can choose if it's coming from the three types of analysis, or if it's a control voltage input, or whatnot. And I also have some mappings, for example, multiplication, power, uh, map, simple map, filter the signal, an integrator. And eventually I will have a bunch more things. But the key of this system is just be, being able to basically load and save different compositions without creating new patches and ending up with a folder structure that looks like hell, which is kind of the case normally. Yeah, this is the first thing that I'm going to show. That was rather quickly, <laughs> unless anyone has questions, which I highly doubt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can move on into the actual second thing. I will just to show this a little bit more. This has uh, inside is uh, it uses the model runtime approach. So I have a model which is a collection of records that define how the system looks and behaves, and then I have this runtime node packed full of uh, functionality. And inside this thing, I also have um, my custom Raymart uh, experiment thing, which yeah, I can show you through the dependencies. Here, I have all my own uh, marching algorithms that I've been creating over time. And these are the ones that are currently used. I use a glass ray margin that looks a bit like hell. But it's all done with the newer fuse, all node base. Uh, I basically ported all my shaders from code to patch. And it's actually quite nice to do so, a bit of a hassle to actually do that. But as a proof of concept, I think it's great that you can basically mirror any shader into a node base approach. So right now, I have no code shaders in this project. It's all nodes based. Mm -hmm. And OK, I want to close this thing and quickly show you the second thing that I wanted to show. And that would be kind of it. So let me make this small and close this guy. And the second thing that I've been working on is a library. So it's the first library that I will eventually publish as a nugget, the first contribution that I've done so far, and is an attractor library that you can see here. This is my prototype, which is no more than quite a lot of attractor formulas that you can use already in Fuse. So for example, if we go for a differential example, this will bring up Fuse, and here we have a very nice attractor. Actually, as you can see, there are quite a lot of attractors here. I will start from the first one. And these guys basically have a lot of parameters that you can play with and modify. And they are quite interesting in the way they behave. So yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all based on a video that I did quite a long time ago, but for that video I had to figure out a bunch of particle systems and then I ported this whole library fully. And yeah, you can do quite crazy things with them. What's the what's the output of this node? Sorry, I did not uh, the output of this node is a simple vector three. So say that node vector uh, three. It's fuse. Okay, it's a yeah, fuse. it's a fuse. It's, a fuse okay. it's all fuse based. Mm -hmm. uh, inside, they are actually super simple. All this, this, all there is to it. Mm -hmm. So some additions, multiplications, eventually, eventually sine and cosine waves. Mm -hmm. But it's mostly that. And if I open my favorite ones, 
Well, I can show you all of them. These are all of, of the attractors that I ported so far. Uh, I will finish this library with a bunch more differential equations that I still didn't finish. And I will eventually ask for help to the Fuse guys for some 4D attractors and a bit more complicated stuff that I'm not getting my head around. But I can show you my favorite ones so far, which are these guys here, which make for a very interesting set of shapes. And these guys, again, same thing. You can really make them wiggle and show some different properties to them. Like that. What's going into the attractor? The position of the particle. So this is based around the particle system, uh, just feeding in position and outputting back position. Mm -hmm. Like you can see here, extremely simple operation happening. And I use the, um, the fuse built-in integration uh, stages. I could use also the, all the integrators and with a bit separate, but like this for proof of concept kind of works really well. So I will leave them like that and eventually if I get some nice or not so nice feedback from people, then I can change them and make them into different uh, things. But yeah, so far... Can, can you chain them? Never tried, but <laughs> let's see right now. <laughs> In theory, the, the, the input and output data types are the same. Yeah, so I can eventually do this. And if it doesn't explode, <laughs> then... Uh, uh, and and we, we get a sphere. <laughs> we get uh, not so happy. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Good. My next question would be then: Can you bypass them, like to build a chain of attractors on positions? I never and tried. Then say okay, you know, like the texture fix, but, but yeah. the attractor fix kind of chain of. Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, I didn't know. What, what did you do? Uh, just chain them. He, he he connected the switch. By not having all the inputs of the switch connected, uh, it was just not uh, happy. Just looking at the wrong yeah, signals. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ah, it was yeah. not happy. <laughs> but yes, then you can. I don't know what the results would be when you mix all these things together, but... That's the last one. Is the dominating vector here? Probably. You could potentially use also instead of position, previous position for the for the previous attractor and kind of play with those with those things. I actually didn't play also with velocity, with age, but yeah, velocity at least is a vector three, so you can potentially use them in velocity as well. And anywhere where there's a vector three calculation, then you can use them. Shader. Yeah, then three. if you make a bypass input. Yeah. I can so, or we call it apply on the texture fix. Yeah, I can, I can apply so, yeah setting a negative of bypass. Yeah. Then you can easily play and see what has what effect. Yeah. I actually discovered by doing this that when you make uh, the wrong formulas, when you patch in the wrong mathematics uh, operations, things are amazing. You mm -hmm. know, you never know what's going to happen, but uh, it's almost free the fact that you can use a sine, a cosine, a tangent operation, and it will most likely give you some interesting results altogether. So I try to keep them correct. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't say that this is based on a library called GLCowsP. This is an open source thing full of uh, magnificent math for whoever is interested in this. And I'm trying to make it one to one eventually. Yes, and this was, this was would be my question. I was thinking when you say you translated from code to a fuse, yeah. uh, and I saw some, um, uh, you had a one where the plus and minus and that. Yeah. So, can you then show where <gasps> how this looks like in code? Yeah, we can. Can you see this? Yeah, so then we have the uh, calls AP, but I'm just going to go for the uh, GitHub so we can see it. Let me the Yeah, so this is the library that I ported from GLCAUSE P. And here, if we see 
So which, which is the attractor that I'm looking at? Sin cosine. Okay. So the sin cosine, uh, it's on the trigonometric attractors trigonometric. This is C++ plus plus and okay. I the ones that I didn't import is the one that have some some complex for me uh, C plus plus logic. But here you can see this is the sine cosine attractor. And I don't know if I can manage to put them two side to side. Yes, I can. So eventually you will see that our particle position gets a split through the three components x, y, and z. And then we do all these operations. So for the x position, we add uh, two values and subtract one, one cosine and two sines. So therefore, there you go, one cosine and two sines, and they all get multiplied by a constant value that I guess in shader world you would use a constant value, and I could have done that, but here is for fun, you don't use a constant value, you use a variable value. So then you can get some really cool, fancy stuff moving. Oh, nice. And yeah, this is not yet public because it's a little bit dirty inside, but it will be at some point this week. So if anyone is interested in getting some attractor magic <laughs> happening. Cool. Sounds very attractive. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we also wait for uh, the work uh, presentation and the workflow when you change the code. Because I'm always jealous about the people who know how to share the code. Then I see what the few people are doing and I say, oh, now we got my word. No, it's, I can handle it. But then I see a few of them, I have no idea how to start. <laughs> so okay. And this I like to uh, see this both together. But you said you're working uh, on this for years now. I in the other project. In the so other the... But what you're doing then with this? You're not doing this because shadering and do it for fun and they want to make nuggets? You use it for something else? I mean, this particular thing is a, is a library that I've used for making some, some reactive pieces before. So I thought it would be nice just to pack it together so people can use it as a library because it's already made. And the other thing is just my personal application that I have to, to make these little things that you see maybe on Instagram that I do with some reactive pieces that I stopped for a very long time doing, so doing them because it was just tedious to, to repeat and to reprogram the same patches over and over again to have different uh, mappings uh, of, I don't know, different inputs or slight different parameters or, I don't know, even a version of this guy, I like it better with um, 0 0.5 in this value or maybe I like it better with a 2. So this whole big application is in order for me to be able to create and save projects quickly. Oh wow. Yeah, well, I was also very impressed about your Ingui uh, interface. You, ah, it's a uh, really, thing. really flexible, uh, huge screen and you would check, check, check and you build it up a uh, whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> like, wow, yeah okay. it's the work of uh, two years. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like a Is Ingui now two years old? Yeah, uh, no, no, two years developing the system. The final version, I mean, this one is a year or something. In whenever in we came out, this one I started doing this interface. But before, I actually had another version with Elementa <laughs> but oh, okay. that I gave up really, really quickly uh, because I mean, I think it looks better. But in order to have so many parameters, uh, it's easier just to put in GUI and just load me. Yeah. yeah. The Ingui code part, I would rather not show because it's an absolute nightmare, especially <laughs> this little thing of making the mappings. Uh, but yeah, so this is your basic thing. But but uh, that would be interesting to, to hear. What uh, how would you compare Elementor with with Ingui? You were saying that something was a nightmare. No, in, uh, the Ingui was also some, some kind of nightmare. I and mean, yeah, they all have their own nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. And, and what was the Elementa problem? Um, Elementa problem is more that I'm very picky with the way look things look or should look. So in Elementa gives you the possibility of making your own drawers and making your own things look the way you want, meaning I would never finish this thing. 
that would get okay, stuck. Okay, well, that's <laughs> unfair then, because, I mean... You just came has, up. <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it was too much. It offers yeah. all these styling possibilities, and that's why you don't buy the biggest one. <laughs> yeah. need to use the one. And the thing is that I will need to make my own, because some of the widgets that... Uh, I mean, for example, uh, this little thing would be... I would need to create it on Elementor already. You know, this, uh, mm -hmm. what is the histogram is called in, in things. It's just a collection of, of sliders that you cannot manipulate in this case, mm -hmm. but they are just visualization. And I would rather have Elementor, to be honest, for the final product, as again, as the way it looks. Yeah. And, but I ended up with this just to make it, just to be able to see that I, A, can make it, B, it can work, and then eventually make it nice and beautiful eventually. But and the nightmare thing we it is dealing with this context and and things. So for example, here uh, if I want to create a map, I right click in order to know that first I'm pointing towards this particular object, and second that this particular object gets linked to somewhere else. In this case, the audio input and creates this mapping. Only this thing has taken me months for this to work. I am pretty happy with the way it works. It still has a lot of bugs and it still is not perfect, but at least it's in a workable state. And I, and I can now start using it, hopefully. By the way, if you implement that background with the points, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Marsh. <laughs> yeah. I was also impressed when I had the workshop with Anton, when he showed uh, in GUI, and I understand the concept of saving windows, uh, nested windows, and the possibility that it, it looks, uh, before, uh, before the workshop it would be here, I was thinking, whoa, this, this is too complex, but uh, when you go through and you understand it, it's simpler than it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. just, uh, a good, a good, this is what my uh, elemental thing is now, it's, I'm sorry, now I say elemental, now the imgui, <laughs> the flexibility and the nested thing is amazing. It's clean for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's clean for the moment. It's clean for the moment. But then... We we'll still going there. <laughs> <laughs> we still going in. Oh, it's right. clean. It's okay. Uh, no, it's okay. But these guys, these guys, the parameter vector 2 <laughs> editors, this is where the uh, oh, yeah. uh, thing... It's it's similar. Yeah. Similar, yeah. <laughs> it was worse, I think. So, yeah. Okay, thanks again. So, yeah, thank you. There's no question, but everyone on ah. the chat is um, saying congratulations, and it's really good. Thank you so much. Really Shout good comments. Somewhat good soon. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. So, how should we go on? Should. Okay, no one gets first, so I, I jump into the. Can I use your notebook? I have nothing. You can use my notebook, of course you can. Should I take so, off four of it? Yes, because otherwise. So we are today improvising a little bit, so I also jump in. I know that. Hi. Do you want to show something? Yeah, it's So am I in the screen? Right. Or no, I don't need to. So there was the other um Okay. So I want, uh, not I present uh, something we did at the beginning this year with uh, Badaboom. And it's, uh, yes, it's called Analog Metaverse. Okay, so it was um, a funding of uh, uh, German art pro. How can I say? Von Starstellen, the Künste Prozessförderung. So, <laughs> yeah, it's sponsored. It was sponsored by uh, the the by the government. <laughs> Let's say it like that way. <laughs> yeah, and um, it's. I, I will just. I don't. Um, there is. Oh, uh, wait. I will go for. Uh, this and just show now in and I will talk because without audio that no, that you don't get uh, confused. So my part in this project, there were four people in this project, uh, me for the uh, coding technical stuff and uh, the um, 
Alessandro, okay, wait, f sorry, I'm, I'm not prepared for this, I'm just uh, improvising. The goal was, we wanted to create a machine where any artist without any uh, knowledge of a computer or uh, that it can create their own VR world with analog stuff. So that they can uh, cut out pieces or model pieces and they are immediately uh, in a three-dimensional world where they can arrange it and even be live on, uh, with, uh, in, a, in a headset that can use it as a performance tool um, while uh, and also saving some scenes so that um, the goal was also we invited to a uh, three artists where i um, so alessandro some people of you know is the specialist of uh, paper cuts and uh, modeling and do funky shit with any analog stuff then we have a stage designer uh, uh, whoops, wait a uh, stage designer in and a game designer in, um, focusing only more on conceptual and uh, analog pieces. This was the project about. Uh, here I make a stop. Wait, I try. Up, I try to explain a little bit the setup. That uh, oh, voila, my video got crazy. So pause. Okay, here you see. Uh, Ah, come on, why is YouTube making this overlay? There's an X over there. Look at the screen there. Ah, it's, I can only see it on another screen. Okay, wait. Oh, I cannot go with the mouse. It's lagging. Okay, <laughs> here is Zoom is hovering something. Okay. So here is a table uh, where it's the, like the performance station. And here is the creation. There are two parts. So you, you um, create uh, or transform your stuff, you digitalize your stuff uh, for 2D stuff and for 3D stuff. And you then have it on the Aruko and put it on the performance table where it's immediately in the world. In the, in the 3D world, you have a touch screen where you can save it. It's like a Microsoft Paint on steroids. So you can make stamp, 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 stamp of um, and you can even uh, record uh, some, some, some movement. And in the end, you can save the scenes if you need for performance. And visitors can then be there. So with this limitation, with this limitations of the process, the artists uh, can start. Ah, and you, even you can save sound uh, on a piece and then put the sound in, in the space. We, tr we try, or I try to make it as simple. It sounds like now a little bit more confusing than it was. And I try um, with another video to, to show how, for example, one artist does uh, the, the process. Oh, I should really not only improvise, so I should be more prepared. Um, let's take Alessandro. I like the colorful world of Alessandro. So let's... So, Alessandro took here, I explained this machine. This is a, a camera with light from above and the lightning table down. And you also see here in the background, you can uh, set up the alpha. So you put stuff, stuff on it and uh, it can save um, pictures like um, a stop motion machine. So you can even crea create motion uh, on, from, from 2D pieces. And so, in this machine, the, there was this alpha cut out pieces created. On the second machine, it's a standardized, we, because we also wanted to bring in, whoop, go back. We want to bring in models. So we used um, 3D scanning uh, of, um, and then we go through a program and then we save it as, um, what we saved as FNF and SNFBX on a file. And even if with Alembic, there can be some movement, but then you have to go through another program. We really fast saw that this process was a little bit too much for um, someone. It, it took a while. Then we found out it was called Luma, Luma AI. It was just a photo. It was an AI based uh, Luma AI labs, I think. Um, it was just some photos with a, with a mobile phone, then you send it to the AI and they make you a mesh. Normally they are famous for um, Nerf. 
uh, but you can also get the mesh out and then put it as FBX and um, it was it's a faster process, but scanning was also a nice thing. So, and then when you have this digitalized thing on a Aruko, where is the Aruko picture? So, so here he saved it, the camera. Okay, then let's go. Oh, I see, I show you the screen. Okay, ah, sorry. This, uh, I need to show you the Arukos to understand it. Okay, now you have to imagine these elements he digit, uh, did, were digitalized. They are on a flat table. And this screen, you have like a 3D model program. You can always press save. This is, this is, and, and down, you can rotate it. This is the Microsoft Paint on steroids. Mm -hmm. And with that, this, these worlds can, uh, because it's just copy, 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 copy. It's like Lego. And, and where is the colorful going on? OK. And Ali got then crazy with a second thing. He was drawing, cutting, and building up building up like with 2D. And uh, uh, shout out to the um, Toby K, the poly tools. These things are amazing. So you use all these 2D DDSs. Also, it can be movies. And the poly tools um, will make it a 3D world. And you build up a whole world by 2D planes. And the next, and, uh, and the, the communication was with uh, XML. Everything was uh, saved, the sceneries in uh, um, XML files, and then loaded what was just needed, and DDS. So the ID was the Aruko, which the DDS folder is now uh, used, and the rest was then a communication in a in thing. And so here, this show is a single person thing going through a sculpture uh, way. I will show you. How, do we have a time limit today? Because there's no one talking. You're the moderator. I am the moderator. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, um, they, because there is this one is more a single person uh, going through, and I show you from Larissa. She's a stage designer and also a performer. Whoop, whoop. Now I'm on the wrong one. Um, yes, Larissa. And Larissa. She's also doing a lot of uh, puppeteering things and other and stage design things. And she designed um, a place where she guides people through a house with a lot of things. So you can discover they're this and they're that. And she uh, has the controller, her idea, and she guides the visitor and makes sounds live and also change life, the environment when you are at a special, um, it's like it's like when uh, you code and, and, and hitbox. Ah, okay, very good. So here, for example, I see the Aruko stuff. So, ah, now this is good. So she built this, saved this image, put an Aruko then there, because then you save it on Aruko, the communication, yes, is based on, and, tuck, and then it's here. And now you can arrange it where you want. So you rotate it, then you put it in front. So it's like this Lego playing online thing or um, Minecraft. I don't know. I don't play Minecraft. But yeah, I also like that they're experimenting a lot of with different materials. And yeah, and all a lot of experimenting. I love new con at the end. I show you the word, the house. Maybe there's a better screenshot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, and trigger points that um, the performer puts stuff live on stage. Uh, it's not uh, the code. So it, she decides or she triggers things. So it's a huge, what can I say, turntable or mixing, putting, yeah, and audio. So, and uh, Yelis, our sec, where is Yelis? Yelis. She uh, made a game out of it. So where I am here, close this and Yelis, 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 where are you? Here. So, yep, Yelis makes a lot of things out of paper cuts. She designed um, 
It acts a stage when uh, the person on the VR is in, um, in this room and then it has to solve some riddles. So when uh, the person touches uh, some pieces she arranged, uh, she puts then uh, um, a message on or a sound, or I think that it goes on and on. So it's kind of point and click by VR. And uh, it's very good for prototyping. <laughs> so when you when you think something through, because you can always change really fast. And yeah, the process is really because it's live. You cut out something, you put it there, you, you save it on the Roku, you put it there, it's already live. You staged it, and then you can test it. So this was um, okay. Here you see some someone in front of these boxes. Ah, oh, uh, uh, very fast cuts. So here are virtual three boxes. And here are analog three boxes. And with different, here, touch, say, mouth taste, and uh, then you, 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 you come further and you get signals, or um, then there are, ah, you found something, what is the next? And there are, yeah. So you don't see it, but you feel it. And when you, have a, you open a letter in virtual reality, a huge letter uh, was, was opening. Okay, so mm -hmm. wow. Well, okay, hopefully, I got now. Um, I got you through, and everyone understands it. And it was not too um, the process. Hopefully, you got what I explained, and it was not too mega chaotic because I clicked and it, uh, a lot of through you and this. Okay, good. So yes, and it was also when you when you ah um the the dolphin for example is an alembic and uh, it moves uh, the the tail the tail and when you turn it around uh, it was uh, swimming around and there is also documentation the links will then below if someone is interested it will, when they when they are talking these two guys it's more understandable because there's a structure and the cutting and it's a documentation so now I'm more um, <laughs> improvising here. So, and this is the world from out, from in, and yeah, it was uh, very nice. And, and has this ever been uh, like performed in front of an audience? Uh, that... It's more or less document. Uh, it's documented and it works out, and uh, it's now a little bit sleeping. And um, it they, 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 what you see in documentation was performed. <laughs> It worked out, but it was not performed in front of a big audience. Uh, and the concept was then also more on um, single single user and um, test it because you can also bring in more camera, more VR things, or then make the concept bigger. The possibilities are, 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 are really fast, so that it goes so quick, yeah. and you arrange a world by um, with analog stuff. Um, it's uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very proud uh, that it really worked out that they feel comfortable uh, using the stuff and uh, can make without using any software, uh, software they use, uh, but the interface, but don't go into a blender or thing that they model the VR world yeah. and you can really go in and look at your look at your stuff. At your, so, um, it's could be like but uh, puppet theater with an audience of people. Possibilities are huge. Uh, and I also find out that, uh, what, <laughs> that there are some things, uh, what changed, what should be because of the interface and what, um, yeah, what worked, what worked not. But um, for me, uh, I, yeah, I also say it in the documentation then, then I was expecting more that they use it in uh, performance, but all all four, three characters go crazy in creation their world mm -hmm. so they really wanted to and even that we needed more time that you that the more rethink or that for everyone uh, could be a more deeper dive in how how i use this in uh, in a, in, a, in another way to 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 influence i like what what Yelis did that she really tries to use game mechanic by doing it analog what uh, now happens this now happens this and now is this and she puts then the things on the on the on the table and also this you can also grow much much more crazy or even when when there is um 
the sounds um, and uh, all, but yes the, the focus was more into the creation of the world and we don't want to say now you have to you have to do this you have to do that so we want to give them the, the thing and go crazy with it um, yes yeah. um, and have you only done this with specific artists or have you also done it in a workshop setting with younger this was younger they are younger than us. <laughs> <laughs> um, in a school, for example. Right? No, it would, yeah, it would be perfect for a school. Uh, because also the, we did this um, stop motion thing uh, where you see only the white box the, with kids do, uh, to, learn, to um, bring them closer how movies are working when they cut out stuff. Mm -hmm. And all in the uh, tutorial and museum in, in Berlin, we did yeah. workshops where they create cars. And then in a huge installation, uh, there are these cars, what they are creating, what they was creating, painting and all this stuff. So this concept of creation by drawing was already is part of, of the studio, but to bring this in 3D, and yes, again, Toby Case Poly Tools uh, did then, this was the, then the drive to another direction because the results in building up uh, everything with a little bit of thickness of 2D stuff makes uh, um, a whole new world. We, uh, we, yes, because at the beginning we were focusing on building with clay and 3D, and you see it's amazing what Alessandro did by yeah. just uh, use some of his. Um, and there you see that uh, I go, uh, it's, yeah. But also when we are in VR now, I, I, I had an amazing, I was this, um, this week with uh, my family in a, in a theme park and there were a, a roller coaster on VR and I was thinking, oh, this must be amazing. No, no, it's completely <laughs> not because the, the physical thing, but the main thing is that you are in this world and, sh and, sh and you are connected to someone. Even when you are in a roller coaster and beside you with someone, it's much more fun. And they made also the, the error or the, the, that I don't. Oh, wow, what I'm looking now. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. And here, I also like that um, the, when you are in the VR, you are connected to the artist. <laughs> and, uh, but it would be better also when you are more people than um, sharing this experience. But we had a, we, the idea was the audience sees what the, the world is looking like because there are more cameras and the person inside or the persons inside are directed by the, the, the DJ or the, the performer. Or I often say DJ because it's looking, it's looking like mm -hmm. uh, one of the... Mm. And so there is also some, like the, the what when the movie when the, the audience knows something what the, the person in the movie doesn't doesn't know what the performer can introduce so there is a dialogue a different there are many ways of to it's this is just a tool set how to yeah. get uh, more craziness and um yeah yeah it's called um analog metaverse and you find uh, this documentation on the uh, website of Bada Boom Berlin. and yeah any questions or I, there are a lot of questions, and now we have uh, close to break time. So then I say, uh, thank you. Cool. So oh, I have to go on with talking. I say we go into a break. We have the first hour. Mm -hmm. and who is next? Who wants to be? In? Yeah, we can decide afterwards. Okay. So how long is the break? Everyone still com comfortable here on the web and in the Zoom? Let's say uh, oh, oh. <laughs> five ten minutes. Ten minutes. We are back in ten minutes. Back again. But also there is a guy on the phone there. There's one on the computer, and the rest is there outside, smoking or smoking. <laughs> but we are back again. Hello again. Second part. Twenty-two worldwide meetup. Now I think after chaotic project presentation and a nice um, new library presentation, we go into more nerd ways. Uh, just or if, if, if you would like to call it that way, I would just say uh, we have a look at our beloved tool together. Ooh. <laughs> so let's, it's, let's it's a surprise us. Surprise us. 
Yes, we will get so a it's, surprise. It's called BBBB. Surprise. BBBB. This is a oh, this is too nerdy. Yeah, no, um, I don't know. I, I just felt like maybe I should fill the void if there are, I mean, uh, less project presentations. And let's maybe just have a look a little bit on uh, what's what's new. Um, and there, there's not a, a lot big news. Oh. to to present but um, news are big news. <laughs> but uh, these <laughs> days um, there's a little small things happening you know and um, that's uh, I think also sometimes um, you know worth mentioning because it's it's the small things that that is uh, sometimes that are annoying you if if they are not done right. the right way, but and 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 then there's this use of feedback in the forums and I don't know and and um, if you, if you don't tackle the small things then it won't get better you know and and then sometimes you just need to develop this way and then again there are the big new developments where where a lot is um, everything is you know reinvented <laughs> we know that as well mm -hmm. so but then this is the perfect meetup for small things because this is the small cute meetup with not many people yeah. but a nice audience exactly Go on. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so um You're not sharing screen. i'm not sharing my screen okay how's that have it uh... Yeah, maybe go out. Uh, exit minimized yeah. video. And then, uh, leave. Uh, no. no. Yeah. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. So, um, first little thing. Um, what? We don't see it. <laughs> what? Goodness. But it, I have a green rectangle around my screen. <laughs> okay, reconnecting. Uh, um, what? Zoom crashed or what? Okay. Yes, I think so. Maybe still here. <clears throat> These are not small things you will show. Yes. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, um, I don't know. Let's start with something very small here. Let me create a renderer here. Um, so the first thing that was, I would say, annoying that we always had uh, a white pin at the renderer mm -hmm. as the first pin, which was super annoying because it's not about the, <laughs> the, the bounds. The and now it's gone, you know, and uh, this is just, it's still there. You can um, turn it on again if you want to connect something. Um, but um, now with the new inspector, you can also just, yeah, show and hide these pins. But um, as a default, um, the, the pin doesn't show up. So that's that's already... So it's all these 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 little things that I want to talk about. That um, working um, with the patch editor and, and you know um, um, I don't know um, for example navigating uh, in the patch editor um, now also is uh, doable more easily with with the touchpad. Uh, um, you can. Um, Hold space and and uh, just um, drag around with with, uh, with the touchpad and and, and navigate uh, like that. And you can do this as well when um, you have a link. Uh, when you are creating a link, um, you still can navigate. And so um, yeah, that's that's stuff like. Um, um working with the patch editor then um some something else with, which is not finished but i just um for a long time wanted to show you it doesn't have to uh the priority yet to make it uh round and nice um because there's just too much else that has a 
bigger importance, but let me still show you. Um, when those uh, workshops um, or the, the, the summer course workshops uh, um, were um, planned, there was also this, this idea that um, there should again be some um, some workshop for uh, how how to get into object oriented thinking and um, because this is just part of um, gamma and um, and sometimes it's just necessary to to wrap your head around um, what's what's an object how uh, do, uh, can objects um, you know work together um, and uh, solve some problem together by uh, you know one object doing the one task and another object doing another task and if they know each other then then they can talk to each other in a way and um to to get into this uh thinking um it's maybe there's this there, there was something missing or is still uh missing uh, missing <clears throat> and um, so um, I think it's it's um, important to understand that um, objects can refer to each other, and um, by that, um, like um, by that, you 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 have a network of uh, or a graph of objects that um, point to each other, and um, um, this is object-oriented thinking, um, and um, so. I felt there there's this necessity uh, to um, at some point also visualize this object graph um, to um, yeah to understand more easily uh, what's what's the shape of your current program how does this program look like um, from a different perspective because if you uh, look at the um, patch editor you only see uh, the instructions so to say what what shall happen but you don't see the living things you don't see the objects um, that point to each other so um, let's, let me just show um, how this could look like um, I have this um, this patch here, uh, bouncy circles, this uh, whoa, it's not reacting. Ah, what's the right click? Um, so, okay. This is this example patch from Skia, and uh, you can, with right click, you can add circles and then you can move them around and you can um, make them bounce. And um, here's um, a visualization of uh, the program. This window shows you the program, which is this help patch. So um, basically, uh, in the middle somewhere, there's this uh, application, example bouncy circles. That's that dot, that's that. Uh, object as, that represents the whole application. Um, this one has a reference to um, several objects. So there's a mouse. You can see this mouse over here. Um, so process nodes, um, as we know, um, they, they, they somehow um, also represent um, an object. They, they um, manage the lifetime of, of one one instance of an object so um that's why we see it uh in this object graph as well um so sometimes it might be confusing it might you might need to to add buttons here in order to filter out certain nodes that you don't want to see like uh, i don't want to see the process nodes i, don't, I just want to see let's say all the objects that are in my fields or in my properties you know um but uh for now this this, this is just a um early sketch still how this could look like so uh we see uh, frame reference group spectral mouse group renderer talk edge talk edge immutable lifetime manager which is um you know it should just say for each because that, that's that one so if 
if I would delete it, it, it goes away, no? Um, so that's, that's that object. Um, and, um, and we see um, that there's this particle thing. Um, um, so on this link, it says particle, which, uh, which is um, the, the arrow, um, the reference to this spread. So um, we have a spread, which is a living thing, a living object itself. And the spread um, points to different particles here. And it looks like that we have six particles. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, ordered weirdly, doesn't matter. Um, but um, it's, 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 a, it's a representation of what's going on. Um, of the living object. So if I move one of those particles around, uh, you see uh, one is somehow chittering here. Well, let's make it move. You see this 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 one here is somehow um, chittering, um, or the others uh, stay in place. And what's also chittering is is the spread. Um, chittering currently is I don't know. Um, of course. Uh, all of this can can uh, be subject to change, but um, chittering currently tells you that um, that this gets uh, created um, all the time. Um, and why does it get created? Well, if we have a look, we, we see it here. No, it's a record, and uh, a record can't mutate. So um, the only thing that um, can happen when we call set particle, uh, uh, if we call update on the particle, for example, and in the update, uh, let's say the position um, gets changed or the velocity gets changed. Um, the only thing that uh, VVVV can do is to um, create a new particle for you um, and um, uh, output it here on the output of that update particle node. So um, that's that's what you see. Um, you see that um, a particle gets and if if I make them bounce heavily here, um, you see that um, all the time new particles get created. Um, you even see a little bit of a um, of old ones um, dying. You know, you 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 have. A, a small animation that you can fetch that okay well something just faded away so um yeah and you see that uh, that the spread also gets recreated all the time because the latency it's even more oh uh, it's <laughs> yeah. a little bit uh, okay it's of course so um, got not that really... slow <laughs> um normally okay so that's uh, just a little um um, outlook here. Um, so uh, the idea is that uh, in wh whatever patch you are, that you always see the, the surrounding. You're, you're somehow inside, let's say, the particle, and then you can see, um, I don't know, um, in this case, <laughs> you don't see much because position and velocity, these are just um, not really um, objects on the heap, but they are just value types, and so they uh, don't get represented here. Um, but if um, I would have, um, you know, a back reference to to something else, um, I would I would see that. Um, so we, you always see the the um, surroundings of your object, and potentially this could be helpful um, to 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 understand um, the the. Yeah, structure of your program, and um, if I go go back, you will also see that this this particle uh, visualization is is the one that is is one of those that um, that's just this one, you know, um, the the basically the first one in my spread. I uh, I see now here uh, as a single particle. Anyway, so this is a very st stupid little e example, but it um, already gets a little bit the point across. Um, yeah, um, there, there could be many uh, 
many improvements on this like for example you click on this particle um, the patch editor jumps in here and visualizes um, this instance of, of the object and um, because currently you you always only see uh, the first instance um, and uh, this this could be a way to to navigate um, your object uh, graph and, and to to actually jump to places where you currently have no way to jump to. Oh, uh, but I also understand it like you said before, it's um, it's a help tool for your workshop so that you want to present or bring people not closer what we saw in object oriented programming and you will use this tool in this explanation. That was the idea um, oh, that right. that maybe uh, this this can help, but it can also confuse. I mean, it depends how yeah, good me, you are. At, um, immediately when you when you teaching. when you make particles, for me it was really, okay. What you, what you are doing when you have fifty thousand or five thousand? <laughs> no, it's it's clever enough to 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 just uh, focus on. Uh, uh, on a few, of, it doesn't make sense to 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 visualize fifty thousand. So um, yeah, it just it, would be a nice it tries to 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 um, you know have. But it may yeah, so amazing. Well, then afterwards, I will ask you. Yeah, it so tries to give a wrong. sneak preview yeah, yeah. to to what's actually happening. Of yeah. course, there are millions of objects somewhere flying around, and uh, it just tries to be a little bit clever and show you a little bit of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Sorry to to make a little bit. I like to hear more. Right. Uh, someone is no one else now more presenting something. I will. I will. Then you uh, hopefully you go on because uh, I will. Then you want to hear more little things. Yeah, yeah. We'll um, um, hand over to to Randall at some point. Um, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, didn't yeah. know. Okay, great. Then yeah. uh, two. Can you two make? Uh, and only a big thing now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But, but... <laughs> No, no, now but you, you and Randall rock the show. Okay. I remember. So you, you make, more online. <laughs> you can go you can go through now until the end. I didn't I just wanted to ask what's the perfect. So let's go around. No, you don't want to You're bored. More. More more little things. Okay, okay. Um yeah, and uh, regarding um object oriented Thinking, um, there's also a little bit of improvement happening uh, in the in the node browser. So, um, what's a good example um, for type hierarchy? <laughs> let's let's make one up. I would have had a patch in the branch. I make like a fruit and the banana and the cherry, and you know, otherwise. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Whenever you need an example. Okay, um, let's let's. You can put in. You can go into the collections. Yeah, yeah, but but, but there's. That's also abstract. Yeah. That's that's very. Um, cumbersome. But let's let's just make a um an interface. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure that's gonna help. <laughs> okay, wait, 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 wait. No, nah, nah, come on, do something proper. Smart as possible, I like it. You like it? I'm not sure if the point is coming across then. Yeah. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> yeah, I think that fruit example kind of. Hmm? Makes Make sense. No? The the fruit example <clears throat> sounds like a straightforward idea, like fruit, apple, cherry, whatever. No. <laughs> so, eat me. Yeah, I know. Um. Ah, I need to edit here. Uh, fruit, right? Edit here. Okay. So, um, try this one. Uh, what? 
only an apple is uh, sour. Is it cherry? Yeah. I don't know. Now, um, if we just go into this apple uh, category, we see uh, sourness because that's something the apple has. And we also see eat me because an apple is a fruit and that's why um, this this operation also shows up so um little improvements over here and of course um there, there was more um you see since it's an object all these other operations also make sense somehow um in this context um so uh you can create an apple and then um cast it to whatever. I, yeah, it's I especially know. helpful, I believe, when you or work with, a, with a, yeah, like any .NET library out there, and you don't know it yet. Yeah. And then you basically try to browse it, and then when you go into some category you think is worthwhile for you to look at, before you didn't see anything, you just usually just saw one thing and it was like, eh, hey, I don't get it. But now it shows you the the inheritance. all the the, the, the the super types like the inheritance the, the real hierarchy of the of the type system oh, okay. so you actually when you now browse in even though you go top level on the most specialized thing like the apple here even the, now you still see what the fruit has to offer and what uh, you know the, i just want to say the vegetable but that's wrong <laughs> but you know that's the point kind of um and i think it was missing from the start and um, this should also happen. quite nice that you can see which class or interface is giving you which operation or member that's that's quite nice yeah so if you go into form then you see well everything of the form and then of the container control and then of the scrollable control and the control and at the end of the object and it's i disposable as well and whatever yeah so all of this makes sense to use in this context and uh, yeah that makes it much easier to to work with foreign type hierarchies okay um what else i think um yeah, why don't we draw out some of these elements in the because then you can have like a huge list of elements. Can you filter out some of them? Like I don't want to see anything related to fruit. I just want apple. Mm, no, you, you can't uh, currently, but it's ordered in a way you you see it immediately. Um, that uh, as soon as as it starts. Um, to have these gray uh, categories uh, behind it, then it's uh, something from the from the super type, from from an interface for, yeah. or, or there's no way some other class. Because in the other uh, example you showed, there were like a huge list, mm. scrollable list. Yeah, yeah. So maybe sometimes you just want to remove some of them because you really want to use them. Mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. No, it's it's not possible, yeah. but. Um, I think the more buttons you have, uh, the, the, the more you can trick yourself, um, and you just just stop uh, stop scrolling. I would say. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, um, of course um, there could be more settings and more buttons, but yeah, I'm not so sure. Okay, um, so the last thing um, is um, the global channel browser because i don't know uh, the this thing we, sh we showed uh, last time um so let me just close this thing. do you remember this pdf we had in beta where you see all the shortcuts now i think we have to start for gamma again because now there's this window this window this window so all the shortcuts. you know in the help browser there is an page with all the shortcuts shown? I forgot. Yeah, it's very <laughs> prominent. F1 and then it says shortcuts. 
Ja. <lacht> 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 yeah, just ask for the visitors. <lacht> asking for a friend. <lacht> yeah, asking for a friend, yes. <lacht> No, but it's not, it's, it's not up to date. Yeah. It's not up to date. But I have, honestly, these shortcuts are not um, in the store yet. Right? Control G. Uh, yeah, I'm Control not sure G. that's going to stay. Yeah, it's good. So. Some point we have the boot feature then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, something that I yeah. missed to show. Just yeah. Yeah. How easy it is to create a spread of spread of spread of integer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, if you have it, you can connect it upwards or downwards. It's awesome, yeah. Okay, um, let's go to the global channel demo, and I would say, Randall, are you ready? Can we do it from your screen? As ready as I'm ever going to be, at least for today. So, yeah. Uh, okay. well, first of all, hello, everybody. Good hello, to see you. Do you want to do a bit of an introduction to the global channel stuff, or...? Um, are we just jumping straight in? Um, I think it should be. Yeah, I can. For the audience, I, I, I can try. We ask for a friend. <laughs> All right, let me let me drag you over here and these things. All right. Uh, so I'm sorry. Still morning time here, you know, and I'm not a morning <laughs> person. Uh, let's just do a new VL document just to show the window, maybe initially. I have to say, Randall, uh, just one hour ago, um, was convinced by me to, to show something. So <laughs> sorry for the short notice. It's very good. We say April. Cool. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so this is a, I don't know if you're familiar with global channels, it's a new idea, maybe Gregor can talk about more than myself, but now we have this new window where you can um, see, create and manage your global channels. Do you want to say something about global channels per se? Um, just that, that it's uh, meant to be something that you use on a very, very top level in your uh, project and uh, that it's not the golden bullet uh, that, that solves all your problems, uh, especially not if you want to build something modular. You should not build something with global channels because you should you just, just make it uh, something you know, modular systems want to have input pins, and there you connect pins, uh, links to, and in and, and that way it's it's modular. As soon as you start start using global channels inside of mod, um, inside your sub patches somewhere deep down, then they are somehow glued to this idea that there is there has to be a global channel of um, certain name and so on and so forth. So I would just say global channels is um, a, a very high level feature um, that I want to say it's perfect for working with Ingui and Kairos. I used it in these two ways, but it's also a high level when you just want to get something out of. Yeah, with Imgui, I would already say, um, yeah, depends, yeah. Um, channels themselves are, are, um, are, are um, a nice glue somehow to, to, um, to use with, with Imgui. You have to use channels with, when you work with Imgui, but uh, you don't have to use global channels necessarily. But it you can look handy. you you can look up uh, uh, channels or state machines um, so via this uh, thing. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's um, meant to be used to to connect to devices to um, to connect to other machines um, via different protocols, and you can also connect patches with each, uh, with each other. But connecting your patches with with an uh, with a UI, you not necessarily need them because. Yeah, that's just a general comfort. It's comfortable. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so you can create channels uh, um, with this uh, UI, and currently, well, it's also under development, so it's uh, there's not a nice type browser yet, uh, of course, missing. Um, but uh, yeah, like that, you can create a channel. And um, if you now uh, save it, um, you will get uh, a node um, with that name, which is already already correctly typed. And I'd say this uh, if everything turns out correctly. Uh, ah, might be that you need to save the patch to a directory as well. Now you need to create some node in that patch, something. Otherwise, oh yeah, yeah pretty sure. So you see, now it's which. I need to create oh. a channel again. <laughs> All right. Oh, what? Well, a few glitches on the UI, as you can see. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Yes. My. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> so work in progress, as you can see. Let me maybe start from scratch. Close this guy up. So new document. I add something in there. Oh God. So it's already there. So this UI is a bit glitchy and okay. it might change over time. Mileage may vary, but you get the point across. So now we have my channel here, the type. And in theory, yes, here. Now I have this node, which allows me to get the value out. Uh, I could also write a value in. So if I change here, you can see in the UI, the value is updating and this value for the output is also updating. Mm -hmm. And I could also use, instead of this process node that was made for me, I could just go global channel, give it the name of my global channel. So my channel name and connect it to an IO box of the correct type. And you can see that if I change my value here, this value here is updating. This could be on a separate document. Um, and yeah, anything I missed there, Sebastian? If you change the value in the UI, what happens then? It should also work, right? Yes, there you go. Of course, since I'm sending it here, as soon as I Override it here. That's going to take over. OK, <clears throat> so that's global channels. Um, I wanted to give a bit of history. I think this idea came up during the last Kairos camp type uh, meeting we had in Berlin, where we were discussing some sort of global data repository. And it somehow evolved uh, into the global channels, which are now also being used in Kairos. Um, and of course, like Sebastian said, a big part of that idea was to potentially uh, connect it to different protocols, to external applications, devices, and so on. A bit of inspiration taken from Chatain, which is a tool uh, made by this French guy, which does very much that. And so let me move on to our actual demos for the day. So we started with this global channel idea. And then we wanted to implement it or bring it into some of the more commonly used right. protocols. And so we started with uh, MIDI. And because I have a bit of a, like Sebastian said, I didn't have a lot of uh, time to set this up. So I don't have an actual MIDI device connected to my computer. I just have some uh, emulation stuff here. And it's not working perfectly at the moment. Uh, that might very well be because of my local setup here. But what you can see here is uh, I have a document. This is a help patch, working broker still. And in here, I just added a dependency to my library, my device library, in this case, MIDI, as you would if you wanted to use the NuGet. This is equivalent of typing MIDI in the node browser and adding the package that would show up here if you didn't have it. And as soon as I get the, that reference to that package, I can immediately uh, add a MIDI controller module node. Uh, I have the advanced stuff on. 
apologies, mutual controller module node, which is essentially this guy here. And what this gives you is the additional functionality to allow you to connect anything MIDI controller related to a global channel via what we are calling bindings. So essentially you have uh, a global channel already created in your patch. Let's say via here you created, you added a channel, you give it a type. And now when you reference the MIDI uh, nougat, let's say, you can have the additional option of binding this channel that you have created with a MIDI controller uh, communication uh, channel, let's say. So when you have referenced the VL MIDI document here, you can add here, and this MIDI controller module should pop up. And this comes with its own little UI. Uh, and here you can see, you can learn if you're already uh, sending OSC stuff through some other application, you could use the learn button to just kind of pick up the, configura the configuration of the message you're currently sending. You can decide here if you're sending or receiving through this MIDI channel. Uh, you can decide which of your multiple MIDI devices you're going to use for that sending or receiving or both. Then the MIDI channel itself and the controller number. Um, I already have it pre-set up in this case. So you can see this guy is sending on 00, zero uh, receiving, sorry. This guy is receiving on 01, uh, 02, and so on. And here I have that uh, emulation MIDI device uh, configured in my machine. And you can see that if I send on one here, immediately on my global module UI, you can see the value updating. For some reason, it's not updating here immediately, but you can see when I click back on the editor, it updates. This is not how it's supposed to be. It's just some local glitch I have at the moment. But you can see essentially I can play with these values here that are being sent through MIDI and they will pop up in my uh, patch. And I could, of course, uh, potentially send a value from my patch through a global channel using a MIDI binding and get it in my MIDI controller as well. So that's the first part here. I don't know if we have any questions on that front. I have a little one depending on the um, sorry uh, uh, the type. Uh, now we have always used float uh, thirty two. How many types and are spreads also possible? Now I know in the uh, meeting I mean, they have float, but in the other well, well, essentially you can use any type you want, including custom data types. It's not oh. um, it's generic in that regard, right? The UI so far. Uh, it's also clever enough, like if you're sending a custom data type, I think it would even expand, right, Elias, to show you the individual properties and the values and so on. <laughs> we would need to test this all. It's still a work in progress. But yeah, types is not the, the essential uh, limitation oh, here. Oh, say. great, but it's type like we use type in the, in the whole uh, gamma. So it's because I know from Kairos we are, um, and when you use it in interface, the, the, some types are Lines, but okay, so for the, the, the global channels support every every type, and some um, values can uh, get visualized in the in the browser, some not, and then also uh, depending on the protocol, you can send some types and others not. But yeah, yeah. MIDI is uh, yeah, MIDI has the limitation of uh, that it's just yeah, very limited, but. Yeah. Um, in the next one, we, we can. Uh, but I was at the workshop from Ali. Media has a lot of power. So as you can see here, like this is the essential setup potentially, and as you will see, we will now move to OSC. But I just want to get this idea across. And uh, Sune, which who I was talking to about this recently, put it very nicely. This will end up being a sort of a patch bay, right? Right now, I have this global channel associated with a or bound to a media controller, but I could also bind this same global channel to an OSC communication channel to, I don't know, my Kinect position and so on. And all of these things could be either sending or receiving or talking to each other through this same one channel. And that's very powerful, right? So that's kind of where the future is, is heading. I'm going to close this up now. Would it would it be possible to make a matrix interface? 
are you are you applying for the job now, Sune? Do you want to make a matrix interface? No, <laughs> sounds I, like just... you want one. It could of no, course. I can I mean, imagine it like like when you I don't know if you've done Dante mapping and stuff like that with audio channels, where basically say you I want all these inputs to go to all these and it would be because if you get a lot of these, then having to go through each menu and and set each binding might be a bit tedious. So having be able to see a matrix with inputs and outputs might be interesting sounds sounds yeah sounds interesting uh let me write it down yeah. on the internal to-do list i'm not sure if i completely understand what you imagine um do you know about dante audio i don't have it um basically uh, basically you have you have a grid and and then on the top you have I think uh, sources and then at the side you have destinations or other, other or it's the other way around um, and then you can basically say just by clicking here then yeah. you've mapped this input to that output yeah okay yeah well it's, I mean and you can do quite complex and you can even some. And, and there are matrix mixers for modular synthesizers where you can actually have store presets. So you can kind of use it as an automatic patch base so that you can have very complex routings. And, yeah. and then you can just with the switch of a switch change, the, completely change the routing. Um, so, so it would be a cool place to have a kind of preset destination and and some places you can even if if for instance with the uh, rme audio you can it's a kind of matrix not not but but then you can also have kind of the level of each in the extra parameters in each little cell in the matrix mm -hmm. it, did it make sense at all uh, a little bit, but um, no, makes completely sense. The, the only thing I want to say currently, it's um, modeled a little bit uh, the other way around. Maybe there's a way to, to, um, to embrace both uh, ideas, but currently um, we say, okay, um, you create the global channel first and give it a name, so you have the idea. Um, it's like a variable in math or like a, in, in programming, you come up with an idea and with a name, like this is this, and then you, you bind to, to different uh, devices. So there's yeah, a, yeah, but like a middleman uh, and, and it's not like, okay, I have uh, this device and this device and uh, with those channels and with those channels and now uh, I make them talk uh, to each other or make this device send, uh, directly a value over to this device. Um, so um, this currently is not the, uh, the approach that we took. It would be a so bindings matrix. But but uh, I mean, it was just an idea I, I just had. So yeah, yeah. To say um, so. Would, would be I expect to have it on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the assertive attitude we need here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, now I'm moving on to OSC, which is the second place where we attempted to to apply the same principle. And just as a little, okay. First of all, MIDI. The stuff you saw now, it's already out in a new NuGet. You can download and try for yourself. It has a it has a help patch called How to Bind MIDI to a to a Global Channel. And it shows you basically what I just showed you now. So you should be able to go in and, and play with it. And do let us know if you're having any particular issues or you have ideas like Suna, for example, of how this could improve uh, potentially. So we can, we can take those into account. Now, in regards to OSC, we tried the same thing. And while we were at it, just as a little um, announcement, we went ahead also and cleaned up and kind of gave it a facelift to all of the help patches here. 
so have a look at those again. If you haven't in a while, you might find a couple of uh, bits of data that, that could interest you. Uh, but in any case, going back to the OSC Global Channel demo, um, you see here I have a rather saturated help patch, but what you're seeing here is, um, first of all, we define configs. You can think of these are as presets. So or usually in an OSC kind of setup, you will have, you know, a, either something sending or something receiving OSC that you want to talk to or listen to. And these things uh, don't change in terms of IP configurations and ports that often. So what we try to convey with this idea here is that you want to set up, kind of describe your OSC environment here. You know, these are my potential inputs, things I want to receive from. These are my potential outputs, thing, things I want to talk to. You can have as many of each as you want. You can configure their IPs, their ports individually. Uh, it's even clever enough to let you know, let's see if it works. If you try to set up multiple things receiving on the same port, which doesn't work, it will, it will try to tell you with a little warning over there. Um, so there you are. You set up your configuration, your environment configuration, all your different in and out configs. You cons them in a spread, very simple kind of setup. Pass, pass those in into your OSC module. And then again, we have our control G uh, UI here. And you will see that I have three global channels. I pre configured position, position out. We will talk about why we need this too in this particular demo and speed. Each of them has a binding. Uh, here we can see on the tooltip that this is a OSC binding that is receiving. Uh, it's using the myin2 configuration, that being this one over here. You see that we gave him a little name so that when you go into the OSC to configure stuff, here you decide if it's receiving or sending. And once you decide that, you can see from the configuration Drop down list, you can select between your multiple pre configured input or output configurations. And that will reflect the IP port and whatever other configurations might be there for you. Lastly, here you set up the address. Uh, it will try to automatically populate the address uh, using the OSC slash uh, prefix based on your channel name automatically. But you can, of course, change this to whatever you decide if you need it to be differently. And um, that's that. So here I configure all the bindings. This one is receiving, this one is sending, and this one is receiving. Um, these two are configured on the same port, 4447. So I'm sending on 47, receiving on 47 on different channels. And then I'm also receiving on a separate port. And we can see down here what that is doing. So my global channel that I'm using to send out the OSC is uh, the position out global channel, which is this one we can see here. I'm sending out a 2D vector that's being generated by a wanderer. And you can see the value being sent out here. This is a global channel that's receiving this value. So I can use it normally in my application as a global channel. But additionally, since I have this OSC binding, it is also sending this value out on the US OSC port 4447. Uh, additionally, I have this other global channel named differently, which has a binding to a receiving OSC binding that's uh, configured on port, port, and port 447 on the position OSC address. So this is listening 447 position OSC address. This is sending. 447 position OSC address. And so this value I'm receiving here is the value that I'm, that I'm receiving via OSC. It's not a value that I'm receiving via global channel. So this could potentially be received on an external third party application on an OSC MIDI connected controller or any such thing, right? Any questions so far? I know I went about it a bit weirdly. It's an amazing word race of sending and receiving. Yes, yeah, and now. Again, 
you will notice that this guy is receiving on another port and there's no value coming in and that's because nobody is actually sending yet on port 4446 but if i open the sending demo patch uh for osc which is sending on 446 and this is the, the address i'm sending on you can see that now already i'm receiving a 42 here if I were to connect, for example, an LFO here and send a live value out, you can see that now here through this binding, I am receiving the value that is coming in via OSE into my global channel. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> ah. So fantastic. potentially again, I could also have a media controller channel bound to this same thing so that I can control it via the MIDI thing and that ends up being sent out through OSC and any potential combination you can think of there. I hope that makes sense. Um, any questions? No question. Yes. All right. Um, the OSC stuff is not uh, published yet. We had a, a little hiccup publishing the Nougat out today but hopefully between today and tomorrow i hope gregor we will uh, have this published as a new nougat and you should be able to try out the new OSC help patches as well as the global channel functionality and you can send a lot more uh, data than uh, via uh, via media you can send threads and so on no? and comments Yes. Yes, exactly. Here you can send anything you want. Uh, so that's a demo. Thank you for your attention. And let us know. Yeah, yeah. Where... Greetings. You have two o'clock. I was expecting. I understood uh, you were in the morning. You just woke up, or it's just uh, midday. It's two o'clock, yes, but I'm not a morning guy, like I said. <laughs> I don't know how to stop sharing my screen now. Where the hell is Zoom? So no <laughs> questions here? No? I also all questions nearby I answer. In the top of your screen, mm -hmm. Rando. I see it now. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, we had to an or We made a little uh, cozy, um, cute, cute uh, meetup uh, with cute people. Um, so now is the time if everyone everyone wants to stand up and say something. It's like in a wedding, you can say it now or you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Thanks to all. Thanks to all people are uh, here in the Zoom. Yeah, there is a the... question from. Oh, H2. great! This I was waiting for. Could there be a shared memory binding? I guess so. Awesome. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Why not? Application, really. I mean, bindings can go anywhere. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, potentially you could have a Kinect skeleton binding where you can select from a joint, potentially, or an HTTP binding, or a, you know, you can think of anything, and it could become a binding essentially. Database. There's already some work happening on the Redis front. I know. So, you know, as long as it can store or listen to for a value, it can be a binding. Yeah. Maybe it's interesting to show how, how hard or easy it is to make such a binding. Or is this out of scope, maybe? Yeah. Or is it easy or hard? <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> you want to start now? <laughs> 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 no. No, no. But uh, also, um, Sebastian said there will be some uh, showcase workshops and stuff are coming. So little videos of uh, object oriented thing I hear. You want to talk about this and it will be popping up in a day, like a video, like a workshop. Mm. I don't get it really, but I heard something now. Uh, no, I, <laughs> I guess we, we just need to figure out how to uh, make uh, those available and, um, watch, and, and watch. Is in the I don't know uh, what what 
what fits ah, well together. When a German school, school is starting, you start with it. Okay, it's next week. <laughs> 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 so workshops coming next week? No, in, in, in Bavaria, actually. No, I, I got ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, true, true. Okay, Berlin, Berlin starting uh, next week. Okay, okay. So, so great, great. But there will be coming a lot of. Did you say little things? These are big, big, uh, big things. Uh, no, but just to get it right, if I had a package out there, I as uh, someone, and I could just add a binding, right? It would pop up in this system. Even look. You could I mean, create your own module, and it would pop up as a module for a binding. There are some things you need to do, and we're still kind of cleaning that up but yes it's something you as a as an individual developer could provide yourself yes i remember there is this shared memory uh, nougat out there and i'm not sure the question came from there so the author of that library could add this um, functionality to its own package and then the user of the shared memory nougat would be able to basically add a binding which would then ask a hey, shared memory and so on this is already possible, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah but the, the big question is, uh, do we now do everything with bindings and, uh, and not with, with then, links anymore? Or for, <laughs> wait, I mean, a chain map, it, shared memory makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's yeah in the process how, communication. How many uh, locations do you have in OC? I have a lot of different addresses. No, and it's, it's shared memory. It's, it's the same thing. You just say a string must be unique uh, across your computer. Yeah. That's it. So it makes perfect sense that this is a, an offer, so to say. Sounds possible. Just, I'm just wondering. It will be done. What's the story? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I not finish? <laughs> no. H2A replied, I was wondering if the data was copied to. What? I was wondering if the data was copied to. I'm guessing in the context of global channels and shared memory. Not sure. The answer yeah. is there is a copying actually. Yeah, you always need to copy into shared memory, I guess. Or I don't know, that's up to you, I guess, to the not sure <laughs> what the question is. I mean if it's we are not really sure. I mean probably I think it's I'm, I'm guessing he's asking like for example when i bind osc to a global channel is this flow being copied from the osc stream into my into a different variable in the global channel itself is there data duplication because i guess in shared memory it's big stuff right I'm trying yeah, to guess then, i don't know but then i would say if in shared memory you don't can't copy because it's one gigabyte you could still somehow make your own data type which reflects this idea that you're referring to something, right? That it's basically exactly. something which points somewhere, and that little something you share, like, you know what I mean? It's this. Yes, this instead of sharing the data, you share the. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So like, think... a, let's say a shared texture. Uh, it's the same idea, it's shared memory on your machine and you get a handle and, and, and pointer to that shared thing and that one you pass around. Yeah. On the receiving side, you then know, ah, it means I should look there. So, yeah. so I guess H2A to answer your question, in the case of shared memory, the implementation for the binding should not be copying the memory itself, but doing exactly what Elias just said. But this is up to the implementer of this module binding thing right if you copy the data or if you do something more exactly. clever in the end yeah uh, i did forget to say thank you to sune who helped me test the osc stuff quite a bit and, and came up with a massive amount of bugs in a very short amount of time so thanks for that <laughs> yeah. thank you you helped us helped out made my life much simpler afterwards Okay. Uh, and on that note, I must say that the OSC stuff, and I'm not sure about the MIDI, but uh, Sooner reported it's breaking his export uh, workflow at the moment. So we need to look into that and, and iron out any bugs we find on that front. So just be aware. Yep. Any questions left? I have, a, <laughs> I have an appointment with my barber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> or you, uh, Randall, you want to play on your cello in the back? <laughs> <laughs> no, <but laughs> you know. I will oh, never yeah. get a haircut. <laughs> He's muted. He's Great. He's muted. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so then let's say goodbye. Have a good night. And we see us in the element, in the forum, and um, yeah, see us on YouTube thing, website is existing. There is also Instagram existing, you know. There is also Fediverse existing. So VVV as a with I'm stupid now. Done with VVV? Made, made with VVV. No. Sorry, Fediverse and Instagram made with VVV. Nice works. And thanks. Bye to all. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao.